You've been working on power cycle theory since 1965, and you commented in your lecture that the only systems transformation in history that did not result in a major war occurred in 1989. What effect has this had on the development of power cycle theory since then? Well, I think what it has done is to put great emphasis on how you resolve a systems transformation. So, uh, with the help of historians, we're looking much more carefully at the end of the Cold War, the collapse of the Soviet Union, the unification of Germany, uh, to see how this was managed in a way that would contrast it with all those other systems transformations. And the answer is that uh, I think we have lessons from this, and there'll be more lessons in the future as we study this more carefully, uh, because we are quite sure that there will be another systems transformation, and we're going to have to apply those lessons in the future. Could you give a quick assessment of the current international climate, global recession, major natural disasters, conflict in the Middle East, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in the context of power cycle theory? Well, uh, in the little article that I mentioned that I've just completed, I start off by saying there are a myriad of problems, uh, and all the ones that you've listed and, and, and more, and these are all uh, preoccupations for policymakers. So it is only students at SAIS and uh, scholars and others who have a little opportunity to reflect who can look at these broader questions and ask what is the significance of something like systems transformation in the future for the stability of the world system itself. So we have the time to reflect on this and we ought to use that time very carefully because this is uh, the, 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 this issue, this dilemma that we potentially face is of extraordinary proportions and it has huge significance even though today war of this sort is unthinkable. And finally, what would you encourage watchdogs or power cycle scholars to keep an eye on in the coming years regarding China's progression through its power cycle? I think there's one issue that they will be interested in and that we should be interested in, and that is when do they go from accelerating growth uh, in relative power to a point where they pass through this first inflection point and enter a period of declining rate of growth. Their level of, of increase in power will continue. They'll be continuing to be more and more powerful in, in terms of, uh, of the region and in terms of the global system. But the rate of growth is going to fall off. And when that happens, this comes as a massive shock, as we showed in terms of, of uh, power cycle theory, where expectations are actually uh, go through a, a discontinuity and where there's a shock that's abrupt and massive and governments, including China, have to adapt to this and do so in a way which does not slip into a war that nobody wants. Thank you.